Hello, I'm Middlesex County Field Director Ron Rios. Middlesex County has a long-standing commitment to keeping our environment safe and healthy. We have preserved more than 8,000 acres of open space and more than 5,000 acres of farmland despite being the second most populous county in the state. Safeguarding these lands helps us protect our water, air, and natural habitats for wildlife and native plant species. It also decreases our need for infrastructure such as roads and bridges, lessening the effects of runoff, which may pollute our waterways. The following video discusses one project we have undertaken to protect and restore natural areas. You will learn what Middlesex County and our partners, including the Freehold Soil Conservation District and the Township of Monroe, are doing to protect the shoreline of Manalapan Lake in Thompson Park. The shoreline restoration project shown in this video will grow into a healthy vegetated buffer that controls soil erosion, soaks up pollutants, increases beneficial habitat, and improves the aesthetics of the lake. It is the latest in a series of projects that is helping us keep the Manalapan watershed healthy. On behalf of the entire Middlesex County Board of Chosen Freeholders, I thank you for watching and encourage you to embrace these techniques to protect your surrounding natural areas. Hi, I'm Michelle Backus, Rutgers Environmental Agent with Middlesex County's Extension Services. And in this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at restoring a shoreline in order to improve water quality. In urban communities, lakes and ponds often suffer from shoreline erosion. Shoreline erosion occurs when the banks of a lake or pond are bare and the soil is exposed. This can be caused by waves and ice hitting the banks. Rainwater runoff from the land can also cause shoreline erosion. Over time, sediment is eroded from the shoreline and deposited in the lake. Shoreline erosion can be made worse if the area is mowed, is heavily used by people visiting the lake, or where Canada geese congregate. Canada geese prefer open lawns next to water bodies and they will often eat shoreline vegetation. Eroded sediments carry with it nutrients leading to algae blooms. Heavy metals and other pollutants attach to sediment decreasing water quality. Excess sediment increases the water's turbidity and can also fill up the lake leading to expensive sediment removal. Shoreline restoration and erosion control can be achieved by installing a shoreline buffer. I'm Eric Gehring. I'm the Open Space Coordinator and Park Naturalist for the Middlesex County Office of Parks and Recreation. Today we are at Middlesex County's beautiful Thompson Park in Monroe Township, New Jersey, where we are visiting a shoreline restoration project that's just wrapping up. The techniques for completing the shoreline restoration project included regrading the flow down towards the lake. We inserted several hundred feet of bio logs. So these are natural material logs that are meant to hold back the soil and provide a place for the soil to sit and for these plants to grow on and break down over time. A silt fence was installed along the edge. The silt fence is a temporary feature installed to prevent additional sediment from getting into the lake during the construction activities. It can also protect the plants while they get established. Hi, my name is Corey Spiroff. I work for Princeton Hydro. I'm the landscape designer there doing shoreline restoration. So when working at a public park, uh, it's important to remember how people were experiencing that area before you started the restoration. So if there are view sheds there that people are drawn to, you want to keep those view sheds open. You don't want to plant anything that's too tall or too aggressive in that area and eliminate that view shed. Before your restoration, look for erosion paths from people's foot traffic. You know that those are heavily traversed areas and that's sort of where you want to keep your access points and keep your planting away from. Consider how the lake or pond is used by the community. Do you need to provide access for lake recreation like fishing or boating? Consider clustering trees rather than spreading them out so they don't block the view. Also consider providing access for long-term maintenance of the buffer. Any disturbance along a waterway is a regulated activity and requires permits from the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, the local soil conservation district, and possibly the Army Corps before getting started. The best time to install a shoreline buffer is in the spring, with the second best time being the fall. 
it is helpful to avoid hot summer months for planting. A shoreline buffer uses native plants and erosion control materials to stabilize the soil and stop erosion. Erosion control blankets and coir logs are installed and native vegetation is planted into these materials. Over time, the plant roots form a network that helps stabilize the sediment and eventually the erosion control materials decompose, allowing the plants to do most of the work. The plants grow into a healthy vegetated buffer that protects the shoreline, soaks up pollutants, and provides beneficial habitat for many different species. In addition, Canada geese avoid areas where they don't have a direct line of sight to the shore. A shoreline buffer will extend from the water upslope to drier upland areas. Therefore, a range of plants should be selected from those that can tolerate being in the water to those that prefer dry environments. These plants would include grasses, flowering plants, shrubs, and trees. Examples of plants only found in wet areas are swamp rose mallow, green bulrush, and pickerel weed. Examples of plants that can live in wet and dry environments are arrowwood viburnum, northern bayberry, and river birch. Examples of plants that prefer dry environments include wild bergamot, common milkweed, and purple coneflower. In upland areas, some plants can be established by seed, which will help save money. Native plants that are adapted to your local region are best for a shoreline buffer. Many native plants have extensive root systems, require less maintenance, and provide the best habitat value. So with shoreline restoration, plant selection is really important. For aesthetic values, you look for species that have color all year round or seasonal color. So we have a winter berry holly that we're putting in that has red berries and will stay red in the winter. So these plants are going to provide a variety of benefits for this project. Not only will they prevent erosion, reduce the amount of sediment running off into the lake, they're going to provide habitat for birds and butterflies and other wildlife. And of course, they're also going to reduce the amount of Canada goose impacts that we have here in our park. When selecting a contractor, it's important that they have a track record of success with ecological restoration projects. They should be familiar with good sources of native plants and understand the sensitivity of a lake ecosystem. When planting in a heavily used area such as a park, don't be surprised if you encounter very compacted soils from years of recreation and mowing. These soils may be difficult to plant in and may require using a rototiller to loosen the soil. Plugs are planted in and around the biologs at the base of the slope. Maintenance on a project like this is fairly simple. First and foremost, make sure your fencing and your goose netting stays intact so that the public and animals aren't getting into places where you have sensitive plants that are just getting established. Keeping it free and clear of litter and debris is also very important, not just for the plants, but also for the way that it looks to the public. And lastly, if you're heading into a drought or a dry season, supplemental watering for your plantings may also be important. In addition, it is important for maintenance staff to be trained to identify the species installed on site so unwanted plants can be removed. These may include invasive plants that can force out the desirable native species. It's important to remove these plants before they become a problem. Lastly, it may be necessary to replant any areas where plants do not survive. No project is complete without educational signage installed at the site to inform the public about the benefits of the project. Restoring the shoreline of a lake or pond can have many benefits for increasing aquatic habitat, controlling soil erosion, and approving the aesthetics of a lake environment. This is one of the many methods communities can use to improve their local watershed. Thank you.